here. So if you've been watching along and you're like, I don't want to get spoiled, uh, spoilers are going to start very soon. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Now you don't know if that was a spoiler or a joke. <laughs> Go see oh Monkey gosh. Man before you come back to us for this next part. Oh, my gosh. Welcome back to The Break Room. Monkey Man released this weekend, but should you see it in theaters? Mm, the answer is yes. Oh, okay. Uh, it's The Break Great. Room. And the <laughs> video. Why are we here? It's a TikTok. We're done now. <laughs> it's a graphic. Yeah. Look at that. Oh my god, I so was not expecting that. I don't know why. That scared me. It's a uh, <laughs> big so Friday funny. energy on the show. Big Friday, Friday energy. energy. Big Friday for um, a whole four days. <laughs> Uh, I'm Evan. Joining me today is Koi Jandro. So happy to be here. So happy to talk, Monkey Man. <laughs> Brandon Barrick. I want more King Cobra backstory. And John Costa. Put me in the ring. <laughs> I'll get my ass kicked. So if you've seen the Break Room movie, re movie review before, uh, we do spoilers usually and rank the movie in parts. But before we do it this time, I wanted to get everyone's kind of like general overview, spoiler-free reaction so that if you haven't seen the movie yet, but you're watching the video and you're like, should I watch this? What do people think? We'll just talk about the movie generally very quickly before we do some spoilers and do the typical kind of format. So what do you guys think of the movie overall? Do not spoil it, John. <laughs> oh, I'm first. Cool, chaotic out of the way first. No, I think, you know... <laughs> This movie, I think the trailer sells a better movie than what we end up getting. Um, okay. That being said, I, I did think the movie is good. Um, you know, Evan and I were talking before the show started to say like, you know, if you judge this movie of its genre, of like, you know, kind of like just straight action gun punch, not like superhero, uh, it's very good. It's a very good movie. Uh, if you were to judge it kind of against like movies in general, it's pretty good. Um, so yeah, th I think those are my kind of general thoughts. I thought that, that, like the fighting was great. I thought uh, the the story that they were telling was really compelling. I thought the screenwriting was a little weak. We'll get into that later. Um, that was kind of my only issue. Cinematography was really wonderful. I thought the performances were good. Uh, it's a good movie. Yeah. Yeah, I would say uh, good action. Looks great in a big screen. Yeah. Uh, some really fun sound design. Some good uh, music. Had a good time. I think it's worth seeing in a theater, mm. for sure. I think that I liked it a little bit more than these guys, but it's not like a, a you know full five, five, five star. But I did think that it was bolder than I expected. Uh, mm. I was so impressed at it birthing not just a new action star, but also a great action director. I was really impressed that Deb Patel was like every single credit he co-wrote, he produced, he directed, he starred. Mm. But what I really loved was it wasn't just Wiccan. Like it leans pretty heavy into the Wick in the, in the trailers and it even kind of acknowledges it at points. But I thought there was a lot of like, um, well, Danny Boyle's a great example. Like Slumdog Millionaire is a lot of how we know Deb Patel. And this felt like it used a lot of Deb Patel's learning on set. Like it, it didn't feel like a first time director. There was a lot of really incredible kinetic energy that is so unique to any director, much less a first time director. Some Aronofsky um, existentialism, some really bold sound design choices. So I think the boldness made up for some of the story fallings for me like I was able to forgive some of that it isn't perfect because of those story failings but I did think that what it accomplished was so special and highly recommended I had a really good time yeah yeah I mean I agree with everybody across the board I think something <clears throat> which we'll get into a little bit more is like the kind of the story of how this movie came to theaters originally supposed to be on Netflix uh, a great quote though from Jordan Peele who was like had a huge hand in making this happen was like he saw the movie and he was like, I was watching it and I could hear the crowd reactions, right? And I don't know if you, what your guys' experience was when you saw it. They all said, yes. <laughs> that was was that part of the YouTube show or was nope. that Twitch? No, nope. Twitch. Twitch. That's, that's, that's a call back to well, the <laughs> chat. Uh, a lot of weird comments now. <laughs> well, yeah. Yes. But I mean, that was the thing, like in the screening yesterday, like I don't think anyone was immune to like, like making audible reactions. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, there was also like a, uh, attempts at like big claps at my screening, like for like uh, big, you know, fight wins or whatever. And it was really interesting to be like, yeah, this is something completely divorced of any IP, sure. right? But it is something that people are like suddenly feel moved to actually like cheer along in the theater for. And for this type of film, like a revenge action story, I feel like I'm not getting that type of reaction if I were to go see like The Beekeeper or something. But yeah. maybe, 
Maybe I would have, because I did not see The Beekeeper in theaters. So. <laughs> totally, no, People got hyped right. at The Beekeeper. Uh, before we get into spoilers, I want to say, I, I think we're living in a really interesting time of new filmmakers that mm. isn't getting enough credit. A lot of people are talking about, you know, the industry failing, and it's, it's easier to get clicks negatively. But yeah. if you look at last year, there were so many really inventive films. There were so mm. many really bold films, even like from, from small to blockbuster, even our two biggest, like Barbie and Oppenheimer. Those are mm -hmm. crazy films on paper mm -hmm. that yeah. exist. And I think if you look at this year, we're only a quarter in, and we've got something like Monkey Man. We've got Civil War coming out next week. We've got a, a you know a Megalopolis coming out this year. There's oh, yeah. a really ambitious vibe to movies right now, and mm -hmm. I think Monkey Man is a testament to that. I also yeah. think last year Universal was the number one studio dethroning Disney for the first time in a long time, and I think it's it's a testament to moviegoers wanting to see original stuff. Because yes. Universal is swinging for the fences with their insanity, like Cocaine Bear and that Santa <laughs> movie with David Harbour. Like, oh they're God. doing the really ambitious stuff, and yeah. you're talking about box office and, and not being on Netflix. Netflix effectively lost $30 million in this movie because they didn't put it That's out. Right. Yeah. This was acquired for $10 million. It's gonna make probably 12 to 15 opening weekend. Oh, putting this in the black opening weekend, like yeah. first frame. So I just, I wanna give some love to Universal for making these big swings and it paying off and, and yeah. respecting moviegoers. Yeah. yeah this yeah. was uh, uh, the budget of this movie was $10 million. Mm -hmm. And you should always root for like a $10 million movie. Yeah. yeah. That's what we want to see. Like a uh, more effective use of budget. Right. And, like, not wasteful. And it's promising too after like June part two, which was 130 million. Yeah. Right. And did very well. The uh, Dial like, of Destiny was 350. <laughs> That maybe, movie maybe was four. $350 million and this was 10. Yeah. That's fucking nuts. Yeah. Universal paid, nuts. Yeah. paid $9 million for the movie. Yeah, so they're gonna, like, the amount of profit that's about to happen yeah. for them. And I and I want more studios to look at these kind of films and go, like, let's make five $10 million movies. Right. Like, yeah. let's just see what happens. Yeah, 100%. And it doesn't have to be, like, the Monkey Man 2, which we'll get into, like, thoughts about, like, a sequel. <laughs> oh, wow. But it could be, like, you know, a, just another entry into this kind of, like, genre from an equally exciting, if not the same, filmmaker, right? Um, all right. I think that probably is good on our, our general reactions here. So if you've been watching along and you're like, I don't want to get spoiled, uh, spoilers are going to start very soon. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Yeah. Now you don't know if that was a spoiler or a joke. <laughs> Go see oh Monkey gosh. Man before you come back to us for this next part. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, as we do on the break. Oh, we... it's getting cut! <laughs> Carla? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Is our editor in the room? Yeah. <laughs> was that sound of the editor's accepting defeat of like, having to deal with this chaos? <laughs> Carla, I respect you. I think you. that was like, uh, mm. Evan's gonna ask me to cut this anyway. Oh, so stop fucking asking. Can we always have the editor in the room so those sounds can happen on Friday shows? Carla, Friday thank you in advance. <laughs> They're both slacking her right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Keep right. it. Get rid of it. As we do on the Break Room Movie Review, we'll grade the movie in parts from one to five. Half points are okay. Our off-screen team will be doing the math to get us the total number. We'll be grading the script, the story and writing, the acting, the visuals, the directing, and of course the most climactic category to end on, the sound and score. Uh, so first, keep in that order, huh? Keep in that order. <laughs> order. It feels, you know, is that my fault? Is that from for, for no, me from? No, it's my fault. Oh, good. No. Okay, great. John and I were talking about the the format of the show today and and changes. Like every and time you mention it, it's always like, I'm sure that'll get changed by it's the next about time. About watch on. time. It's what people want to know the most. <laughs> That's right. And we keep them. That's Wait. right. Uh, the script, so the story is by Dev Patel. Uh, the screenplay is by John Colley, who wrote Master and Commander uh, and Hotel Mumbai, and Paul. Uh, and Gunwella. So what did you guys think about the kind of script and story for, for Monkey Man? You know, I, I feel like it, it definitely follows a formula that we've, we're used to in these kind of revenge movies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think it's like a very competent script that goes through the beats well. Mm -hmm. Maybe slows down a little in the middle, mm -hmm. uh, the way it kind of sets things up. I, you know, and I think it's, it, it works well and it's good and it was entertaining. Uh, I, I, I wanted, I guess, maybe more of a surprise to the yeah. story. I don't know. I don't feel like the final battle was the climax I want, but maybe mm -hmm. that's the comment on the situation, and, you know, like the reality of it. Because the movie kind of exists in like two universes, right? A very serious, grounded one, and maybe a little more Tarantino-esque uh, goofy violence. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. like, I, I don't know if like having this impactful ending worked as well. I don't know. I wanted another surprise, I guess. Yeah. In, yeah. in this genre. But this is like a perfectly great 
much better than most movies that try to do this story. And yeah, from a first time director, incredible. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. Um, I just, I, I, I agree with most of what you're saying. I think it's, its biggest fault almost is it's sort of like paint by numbers approach to a uh, revenge story. And I don't want to say that because it is a really unique film. Um, but the like actual beats of storytelling, I think, we're really familiar in that there was a lack of surprises, right? Yeah. And, and, and you know, I want to ask you guys this, because when I was sitting in the theater, it really struck me as an interesting choice. You have, we're back into, we're in, we're in spoiler territory now. The third act of the film, right, the kid, Dev Patel's character, uh, or maybe just kid, um, kills the police chief first. Mm -hmm. and then kills the like cult leader second right and and the interesting thing with that is that makes sense logically like this is the chief of police a uh, rung down from this like political figure uh so you want to like kill the big bad last or whatever but the personal stakes kind of fuck that up because mm -hmm. you have a much more emotional you know, the, the emotional climax happens before we get to the like action climax. Yeah. And I thought personally the action climax, the way that was shot, the set piece itself was way more interesting when it was kid versus this political figure versus the uh, kid versus police chief figure. That Those two fights, like I preferred the final one to the one right before it, but like emotionally speaking, I would prefer, I think I would have preferred that kill to have happened last. I'm not, yeah. I'm not totally sure where I actually sit on that, but I'm curious to kind of hear from you guys. Yeah. I, I thought it worked because they kind of made him uh, not a religious figure himself, but they leaned into all the religious allegory throughout, like the flashbacks yeah. and leading up to that story. So I thought it worked to have the big bad be taking down the institution itself because throughout the film they sprinkled in how it wasn't just the cop, it was the cop taking orders and totally. the overall system in that neighborhood, in that town, in that in that environment was a problem so it felt like to me he needed to take down the overarching and if he had done that first then i think it would have felt like a denouement to take on his own personal demon and that would have felt like it underserved it so i personally liked yeah. it but i can see where you're coming you know from. they did a lot of that work to set up you know him in the car kind of giving a phone call of like yeah go fucking kill these people all that sort of stuff and and him with you know the, these new buildings that they built because they got this new land and I, I agree with you there and the election sequence i thought was pretty strong yep. I, I liked that we had not just a, a you know an f the police but also a like look at your system look at your institution totally mm -hmm. and, and they so they did do a, they, they did their homework right setting all that up i just feel like you know we saw such an intense scene with the police chief and the mother and you know the like hands were such an important element and the police chief kept saying shit like you know <laughs> is your mom this fucking hot or what, you know, whatever yeah, weird yeah, lines he yeah, keeps yeah. saying. And, and, and so like the focus of him as the villain is what kind of tripped me up. But I think that's what makes it about the Dev Patel character being a man of the people, not just revenge. I think if he had killed the religious figure first and then killed his guy last, it would have made the final boss about himself. And instead, it made the final boss about him helping But the his movie people. is about him. But I think you know when the mean? community takes him in, it makes yeah. him more than himself. He, he, he doesn't leave the money to himself. He leaves right. the money to his people. So, uh, no, yeah, I yeah. mean, so I, I'm on board, but this, the story I'm following is a story of this one man and his revenge to kill the person who killed his mother. Oh, see, I went, I went right? like, this is a guy that becomes a folk hero because he doesn't stop at his mom's killer. He stops yeah, at... Yeah, but I, we and, never get that, like, hit, we don't get any heroics. I'm sorry, that's not the right way of phrasing that. We don't see the after effects of his heroic. That that's fair. Yeah. That's and true. so maybe if we have this like cult figure thing and he's for the people and he's wearing this mask and the mask becomes iconography and like people are graffitiing it on the streets and yeah, shit like that. Like, that makes him. sense to me. <laughs> yeah. But we don't get any of that. It always felt like a more personal story to me. So mm. it's just I, I think, think it's, it's really interesting two people seeing the same movie have, yeah. coming out of it with And a how the order opinion. we interpreted the exact Absolutely. opposite. That's fun. Yeah. And I think like to bring it back to this, like the script of it, it does feel like what you're saying, Koi, is more like where maybe they wanted to go overall, mm. right? To take like how can your personal journey then transcend into becoming something that like can inspire a, a people, right? And that's what I think I was I was saying in my non spoiler at the top was that I can see the flaws in some of the things that didn't land. So yeah. I'll, I'll say my story bit. Uh, I thought the story was the the weakest element of the things, but it was still above average. I'd give yeah, it like a I three just, and a half. I'd say it's like a yeah. B. Started to get my number early, but like I, yeah. I think overall it's my smallest number. But at the same time, 
my issues with it are in that I saw the ambition of trying to do five things and only like yeah. two landing, mm -hmm. but I liked the ambition of the five. So mm -hmm. I saw him becoming a folk hero. I saw the monkey mask as being either like a superhero thing or like a Guy Foxian thing mm -hmm. and it becoming like him being a man of the people, like a Paul Bunyan. But what I really liked was it did address you know, systemic issues. It did address, uh, you know, a lot of racism and a lot of sexism and a lot of bigotry, but it did it in a way that didn't feel heavy handed. And it yeah, did it in a way yeah. that I thought tied into the nature of a culture that I don't know a lot about. And mm -hmm. I felt like the culture was a, a sub character. And I yeah. felt like the culture of that world I got to be immersed in. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so I don't blame the script for trying to do that much. Cause I'd, I'd always rather a script be too ambitious than too linear. So mm -hmm. the writing being the smallest number is only because I didn't feel like it ever explained why the one with the thing in her neck I was like oh I wonder if they knew each other as kids never yeah, really yeah. and like there's I certain things so that I was like, that, yeah. like that moment was so was like that really, dropped in a whole half it really so I was like, I was why like are we so... are, I thought that they were going to reveal that they like knew each other from their I childhood thought, it was such think, an interesting yeah. I, I, and and I, get, as a I get that he was just trying to say like you know, I am doing this for people and there are people that like were affected by this and it's not just me, which is kind of going back to your point, but you're right. I did think like they, they were gonna realize gotta that connection. they knew each other at some point if they yeah. lived in the same neighborhood or whatever. That was, was. from Dog Millionaire. They've done that. That was it. That's that's right. it. <laughs> but I did I did like good. it overall and I like the ambition, yeah. so Yeah. I mean I think that's like like in as we said a little bit earlier, like or I think you said it, John, uh, on air, with like in the canon of these kinds of movies, these revenge mm. action stories, yeah. like mm. this is definitely like a cut above. Whether it is because of like the the cultural like uh, specificity specificities and allegories, or if just because of like the general vision, it feels like much stronger. But it does feel like it's trying to do a lot. It doesn't quite land. I do wonder if some of the stuff with like the woman with the uh, I guess is it a tattoo? This tattoo, tattoo, tattoo or collar? Like, it's yeah, a bird, like, not a sparrow. Not a sparrow. Yeah. It's a bird from his, his woods. Oh, yeah. If that's Which made it they, feel like they knew each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. If it was cut out, like that storyline, you know? Very possible because yeah. she sort of disappears and she shows up for like a shot a in, the, in the third yeah. act as like a deus ex machina yeah. and then is gone. Yeah, it definitely felt like that was a, a subplot that didn't get the yeah. time it deserved. Yeah, yeah. I do want to say really quickly, we are not experts in the kind of like uh, political scene of India and like what is going on. But I do want to shout out um, the Tish Pawa's writing on Slate and Sadat Nalaka's review of the movie uh, A Monkey Man on, for IGN. Both of those are great kind of like entries and like how they viewed the movie and also like a little bit of what's uh, what how they feel Dev Patel is taking the situation that's happening in India and like putting it into film. So I would highly recommend checking those out. Um, I feel overall uh, this this story. I think like if I were to give a number, I would also probably give it a three. I feel like pretty pretty like I like the movie a lot. May, this is not its strongest point for me for sure, but feel it's like again a cut above the rest. So I have three. Koi have three point five. Yeah, I think I would go for a three and a half also on this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's like a perfectly serviceable kind of revenge story, better than like a lot of them that get done. I got really excited when. He's attacking, he's going after the police chief for the first time. Mm. For a second, I thought like, oh, he's going to kill him. And we're like, not even an hour and into that, this and movie. And then the movie goes in a then, fun direction. At that point, they had introduced yeah. the religious character. I was right. like, oh, this is like a have. fun twist where like, he gets what he wants. And then it's like, oh, well, now what do I do? I fucked up my job and uh, I'll be on the run. If I'm a, so... I, I got a little disappointed when I was like, oh, we're doing this. Where I also thought the, that, the, that moment was really cool because of the reverse chronological order of some of the flashbacks. I like yeah. that it wasn't linear because right. there was a little bit more interest because you didn't just see it happen and then go like, oh, and now that's why he's mad. Yeah, so yeah, I like yeah. that element in the writing. Yeah, the slow reveal was like, okay, we get it. You know, At and points then, it works, at points it didn't. And then, it, then there's like that moment of like, when the mom is put in danger where you're like, what am I about to have to sit through in this movie? We're like, I'm not always game for that. And it, you know, it's not that bad. I, not that bad. People die. I don't know if the character dies, but it's like, it's not overtly no, done. But, but it, we're spoiling things. It does There's feel no like, on-screen rape, which is like, no, oh, I was worried, about But like, too. you're worried about that. And it's like, because it's been teased for a yeah. few times at this point in the movie. You're like, we know there's a back tragedy here. Let's, let's, let's get this going. Uh, so yeah, I think three and a half for the story. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm with Evan here a little bit lower than you guys with three. I think it's, it's uh, kind of what you're saying, right? Like, the second you saw the hands, you knew, like, okay, those are scars from a bird, and we know that his mom is not around anymore, and that guy's the villain, and so you could kind of just start putting the movie together, and then we watch it, and it's a little bit like, oh, I wish that this had been slightly different from the movie that I knew we were about to go Yeah, to. some subversion that would be nice. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and also to kind of give the audience some context, like, a lot of the the backstory for Dev Patel's character is like spread out throughout the right, movie. Right. So it does take some time 
to reveal things that are happening that you as an audience are already inferred like these things have happened. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. No, and, and I think it's like a little disappointing that we started here because mm -hmm. I do think that this was the weakest element yeah. of the film. It often uh, seems to be a huge show. show. Yeah. So glad we'll we got to, this uh, here. Because now everybody's already I, left. I, I, I do genuinely think the score is also like a very bad, it's it's not good. Okay, here uh, we I'll, go. I'll, and we'll get to that in a second. But it is it is too bad because the mm. screen, the, everything else is like really top notch. Yeah. The screenplay right. is just kind of where it's yeah. weaker. What's your final number, John? Three. Great. Yep. Okay. Uh, so let's move on to the acting. Dev Patel uh, directing and acting in the film, reteaming with actors he worked with on Hotel Mumbai. Also, Charlton Copley, who you might recognize from District 9 or Chappie. Uh, what do you guys feel about they that? Were, they were in Chappie together. Oh, together. That's right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, how do you guys feel about the acting? I thought the acting was, was like very good. You know, like there's actors I recognize, actors I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the background actors felt very authentic. I know they shot this movie in Indonesia, Indonesia yeah. and India, right? Or I think production was supposed to happen in India and they moved, moved to, Indonesia. It all to Indonesia. I don't know if it like some of it took place in India. Yeah. I'm not quite sure. But like a lot of great acting, you know, like some of them, a lot of looking at the camera, you know, with a lot of a lot of the background it's, actors. It's tough. Sure. It's tough. Yeah, what yeah, are you yeah, gonna yeah. do? Uh, but gonna, it's also tough because ten million dollars. How much you got? Right, right. There's also <laughs> a ton of like POV shots, so yeah. I never know if they're supposed to be looking at me. Like I'm watching Peep Show or something <laughs> like that. Uh, so it's always a little disconcerting when they look right at you. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think everyone does like a really great job, and it feels like very real. It felt like a real, real, you know, down to earth. It didn't feel like it was shot on. Uh, we're not doing production yet, but volume. Like, yeah, yeah, it didn't right. feel like it was shot on the Universal backlot. Right, they right. dressed yeah, it to look right. like Absolutely. India or something. Yeah, right? yeah, it, yeah. it felt like real. And like I loved like a lot of the crowd shots of like at the fighting matches and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I feel like there was more with this this woman who works there that mm -hmm. we never get into. Yeah. And the other woman who works there. The queen. I want to know more the queen lady. Know more she, about was, her. she was so badass. Yeah. Uh, yeah and and like, just awful. Yeah. So I, awful. Yeah. Very badass, very awful. The uh, the main cop guy who really looked like Saddam Hussein. Yeah. Uh, what unconscious he, that was. He, he was very scary. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I thought the acting was like, Really good at it. I mean, yeah. I mean, I tried really... to knock it. And Dev is definitely in there doing some stunts. Yeah, he broke his hand. Broke he his broke hand. his foot. Broke Jail. his foot. <laughs> broke his foot. I mean, yeah. I, I, I would think the acting is one of the strong points, yeah. especially yeah. with someone who like Ben Affleck didn't put himself in Gone Baby Gone. He did his second movie put himself in it. And like <laughs> this would be like if Rocky was written, directed, and starring Stallone. Like right. it is mm. such an impossible. It's a lot to like, do. Yeah, and so to be this proficient, I can't wait to talk about the directing. But yeah. to knock it out of myself, to be this proficient on camera while you're doing the impossible task of directing, I was so impressed at Dev Patel because he he's been my Reed Richards for like ten years. Uh, I was uh, you know I, I've I, seen people fan dude. cast him as Bond after seeing oh. this movie, and I'm pretty oh. in for that. So. Like, like I, I love you, Pedro Bond. Pascal, but there's yeah. a reason he's been my Reed Richards right. for so long because he has that thing where he seems so intelligent, but he also has that thing where he's charming while standoffish. And it's so much fun to see him in this where Monkey Man gets to become a figure because of those attributes. And it's really yeah. cool to see like a folk hero be born. Right. So I was really impressed with the in cage stuff. I was really impressed with him being charming when he had to. I love the scenes with him and that like lackey number two, like yeah. that, that short yeah. guy who, by the way, it was funny. I, I ran into him in the bar line. Line, and it was so funny being in like an interaction in real life with someone that you just saw be the scuzziest. Because <laughs> like he was so good in the movie yeah, that I was like, I don't want, yeah, go. Like, and I was like, oh, this is effective because I'd never seen him before, right, right. and I liked that. I was like, I don't think I trust this new stranger. And yeah. like the acting was so immersive that everyone in the world felt like you weren't watching a movie. It felt like you had an eye line into Deb Patel's character and then everything else was you just on edge. Like the tension was great mm -hmm. because of the acting. And I've, I've been a really big fan of Charlotte Copley, I think like most people since District 9. And whenever he pops up, it's a relief to know there's going to be at least that level of wacky awesome. Yeah, like he great. grounds a huge performance every time. Yeah. So yeah, I, I was impressed. He's great. I think also perfect casting for that. Role. Oh yeah. yeah, of like so showman, but also like a piece of shit. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like really, really good for him. Yeah, love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not much more to say that hasn't been said already, right? It's like it does feel kind of like aces across the board. I do. Uh, well, Brendan and I will find something. Oh yeah, yeah. We're, we we have our, our night colors on. Our, uh, we're just mad. We're we're in a we're uh, yeah. I, I do want to say, uh, speaking of the uh, police chief, I really thought that C. Connor Kerr brought a lot to the role of the police chief. I mm -hmm. thought like that was a role that could have been 
uh, you could have just like swung really hard for it, been like really just like loudly menacing. Yeah. Whereas this is like played very a, a little bit more subtle, and in and when they meet in present day, right? He's definitely like very clearly a piece of shit in the flashbacks, uh, and now he's just like. I'm chilling. I'm doing my thing. I'm like collecting checks, you know. We're, we're like ushering a new, ushering in a new regime, and he's just like, I don't know. He feels so like understatedly uh, bad, you yeah. know. So I, I really thought like that was that was super strong too. Of course, and everything with the rest of the cast and Dev Patel just like knocking that apart with this one, just bringing a lot of like having that believable underdog charm for someone who is also like. You know, fighting in the ring every night and basically sometimes winning, sometimes losing, and then <laughs> then winning all the time. <laughs> yeah, I think before the show started, we were all kind of talking about the performances, and I think the only weak spot that you could maybe point to is like the kind of collection of you know featured extras basically at the temple, of, uh, probably a bunch of non actors mm -hmm. that they had for that role was like maybe the only thing that you could point to to say like some of those some of those line reads yeah, were yeah. wooden or, or whatever but like by and large the fucking dog was doing good work you know what I'm saying <laughs> oh, yeah, the um, I, I thought it was great the scene when he buys the gun by the way is like such a brief scene but yeah. I like loved the gun yeah. sales yeah, guy. Was was and really I think great. that like you know when we talk about the screenplay and the writing I do think that the like dialogue and some of those like smaller moments are really where the screenplay shines and it kind of misses when it comes to like some logic things, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I thought that the performances were were right there. Yeah, and all the stunt actors were really good too, yeah. which I appreciate because like you know the stunt actors, especially in these like fight movies, you have to be like man working in kitchen who yeah. sees stuff going down and has to go like do one of those like wah, you know, and like make one of those like, faces, yeah, and believably slowly get to the guy and fight yeah. him like. They all did great work. Like uh, Axe Guy in the brothel. Yeah. Right? Oh he was great. Axe yeah. Guy was like, awesome. great featured stuntman. Like, yeah. yeah. Really, <laughs> really good. The poor man who was in the brothel, who just got Ooh. axed. Oh, I audibly. Dude, that I moment. Yeah. yeah. And I felt kind of bad. For but a lot of good, like all the stunts looked like really great. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the camera work, uh, very frenetic, but we'll, we'll get to that. If you haven't, we'll if you've gotten to this point and haven't seen the movie, one, shame on yeah. you. But two, uh, the experience of it in a theater is part of it. Like, yeah. I love that. My I, audience, I guess, like, reacting to I love that. Yeah. It felt like I wish Roadhouse was in theaters. Um, oh, yeah. This is a great companion piece to Roadhouse because right. yeah. Roadhouse, Amazon's like, no, no, just streaming. And this is what happens when Netflix loses the movie. Put things in theaters. <laughs> it's really, and it is really good this is in theaters because, yeah, I think this is a great movie to see on a bigger screen. Not at home, distracted yeah. on your device, kitchen lights still on. Yeah, yeah I want to hear stopping your feet. Like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. in the theater and I was sitting there and I was like, this is a six at home. Yeah. This movie is a six at home. Yeah. It's probably an eight and a half in the theater. Yeah. I never it's thought of my phone fun. in the theater, and I love no, that. Fuck no. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. Uh, all right, so... Um, Let's give our score? ratings on the acting. Evan, how do you feel about that? Yeah, uh, I'm going to give... <laughs> I'm in the shot. Yeah, John's in the shot. Uh, so yeah, I think final thoughts overall... Yeah, I forgot about some of the other things you said about the... If we're thinking of the cast overall, man, I think I'm going to have to go with a four. Well, yeah. okay. Four. That's fair. Four for me. That's great. I, I give Dev a five, but I give the overall cast a four, which is good. That's like yeah. an A minus strong. Yeah, yeah. None of these performances will be nominated for an Academy Award. Mm. Uh, not that that means anything, but a four. I think it's fair. <laughs> yeah. there, there weren't any performances where you're like, holy shit, that was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. And this is a movie where that could have... Easily, easily happen. happen. That's true. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. yeah, the style, the you know, genre. Yeah, I would, I would do a four also. I think the acting four, great. Yeah, great cool. stuff. Incredible. All right, I so just, don't they have a stunt Oscar soon? Don't they have one? Now? They're fighting for um, it. Check out the Fall Guy in May. What's the new Oscar they have next year? Casting. 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 They did a special really shout out to stunts, but not right, yet the Oscar. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's deserved. That was deserved. Yeah. Um, before we get to more of the ratings, we want to thank our sponsors today, like. Callshe. Yeah. Uh, Callshe is the first legal financial in exchange in the U.S. where you can bet on any event like release dates for uh, Beyond the Spider-Verse, another Dune movie, and even Rotten Tomato scores. They should have had one for this movie, which because it would have been real interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, but if you got a hunch on if the critic score for a movie will land above or below 90 for movies like Deadpool, Wolverine, Borderlands, or even Gladiator 2, you can buy shares on either side of it. As early reviews come in, the prices will fluctuate. So if you buy it in a lower price, but the share price goes up, you can sell. You can make the price that you sold for. Uh, you're buying features on things you know it's kind of like fantasy football only for the entertainment in industry and it's super fun and you can make some money doing it call she is the only place you can uh bet on these uh oscars and rotten tomato scores in all 50 states but it's got 
a ton of different markets, not just score, uh, Rotten Tomato scores. There's also markets on politics, music, climate, economics, tech, games, and more. You can sign up by going to culture.com slash breakroom. The first 500 traders will get a free $20 credit. Um, also, we want to thank One Shot Energy. Oh, yeah. Everybody, pull out a one shot. Whoa. <laughs> In the office? I don't have What the fuck? Oh. What are you doing? Oh, Telling us a, You know what? Low key though. Oh, there it is. Low key, these voice drops kind of hit. Yeah, the voice drops are good. We wanted to thank One Shot Energy. One Shot Energy, choose our healthy and convenient energy boosting supplement candy for gamers, athletes, thank YouTube you hosts, everybody, really. Uh, they've got the energy chews and focus chews and voice drops. Is this good for the sound, fellas? Yeah, oh, is it working for you? He's trying to do an ad read, John. John, he's trying to do an ad read. Um, hey, so we were talking about the uh, voice drops too. Voice drops are usually flavored with marshmallow, honey, and peppermint, and they're a huge game changer. If you have a job where you have to talk all day long, I can only imagine who wrote that. Who wrote that? You know who wrote that? An auctioneer. Okay, guys, one hundred forty-five, forty-five, forty-five over here. Fifty, 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 fifty-two, fifty-two. I've considered 52. that as a job. I don't know how you get in. What's an entry-level auctioneer position? Uh, I think you first have to go to garage sales. Mm -hmm. You just, uh, just kind of do out. it at a garage sale. You sign up. You're yeah, like, yeah. yeah, for the exposure. I'll be your guy. Points. Yeah, <laughs> my my aunt runs a garage sale a couple times a month. She's always chasing off wannabe auctioneers. Yeah. Every week, I try to show up. It doesn't work out. <laughs> you did a blue. Oh boy. I did. That was oh, the end. No. Uh, he blew oh, himself. Yep. I smurfetted. Oh no. All One Shot's Energy's products are plant-based, naturally sweetened, and designed to give you the energy and focus you need without a bunch of fillers and chemicals. Get started with One Shot Energy today by going to oneshotenergy.com slash newrockstars for 10% off your order. Uh, John, tell us about the merch. When I, when we were about to go live, mm. and I said, hey, do I have to do anything today? Mm. Or am I just gonna be a guest? Mm. And you said, full guest. Hey, John, we want to thank you for joining us today on The Break Room as a guest. And I want to tell you about some of the great X-Men-inspired designs we have right now on Nerd Riot. Roll the show. graphics. Show them, like, look at Whoa. that. Whoa. I saw that part of the show. Sleeve's missing. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, at it, look at Storm. Remember, I right? love this. I love this shirt. It's a great design. Remember when I she really had powers? Oh, hey, cool. you can act like, like you just matriculated to Xavier. Sure. It it's doesn't cool. have that white stripe that on it. Doesn't yeah, have, yeah, it doesn't have, have that white stripe We love the white stripes. We love Very the white stripes. <laughs> it's got sleeve, no white stripe. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the visuals. Um, sh shot by Sharon Meyer, who's the DP, uh, Sharon Meyer, sorry, who's the DP of Whiplash. Mm. Uh, listen, I don't know if we want to get into the editing here as well, but man, I love when people are committed to a consistent, visual and editing style and this movie just like really knocked it out of the park for me yes john are we not going to talk about the editing later is that not one of our categories yeah we really got rid of the categories category. oh this is time to talk about the edit baby <laughs> um i think that we're going to be really mixed on the visuals of this film Whoa. i think that because brandon keeps calling it frenetic which i think is a bad word um no. i wow. love I, this is fun it looked great yeah the edit was really strong in my opinion mm -hmm. um it was probably my favorite part of the movie i thought that like it was really well paced i thought that we could have done with another 30 minutes of the movie to address some of these fucking story problems that we've already talked about i didn't feel like i was like checking my phone to get out of the theater um there was one edit point that i despised but that happens what was it? um when a little kid mm -hmm. is watching his house get burned down, there's like a tracking shot Through and the, the dolly. Door. Yep, and the do, the like dolly starts really late after the edit point, as uh, if they called action yeah. and then waited two beats yeah. and then started the dolly, but they put the edit point too early. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was the only real shot that like really kind of got to me, but uh, by and large, I thought that the editing um, was really good, and I thought the visuals were also super great, especially when they were doing. Actually, there was a one shot that I didn't love. It was like a, well, this a would be hard. Two. Type, this would be the second shot. Well, no, that that's the edit. This oh, is the okay. shot. There was like a hard tight push in on one of the paintings, and the camera was doing this while it was trying to push in. Uh, um, sure. That bothered me, but the, I generally thought like the visuals of the. Uh, uh, those sort of like depictions of the story that he was being told at the beginning and then the flashes to that mm -hmm. when he was sort of like going through his trip, plus the visuals of the, you know, kind of more, more traditional stories that they were kind of like showing on the, in these murals. I thought that all was really cool. He fucking ripped himself open. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was fun. Was also very cool. I liked fun. it. I thought I, I liked it a lot. Uh, I would call the the visuals frenetic, John, and I think you would agree with that. Um, we're jumping around a lot. Like I felt like 
this did feel like, you know, Dev being like, hey, I've learned a lot. I want to show you some mm -hmm. stuff. And we got all sorts of things like these POV shots, these a lot of spinning around shots, like the weird into the chest stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, all the fight sequences. Like, I thought a lot of the fights were pretty well shot. I could tell what was going on. Yeah. It all made sense. Yeah. The car chase sequence and their little buggy with the cops chasing him, I thought that was a little messy, a little yeah. messy. I, but to be, fair, to be fair, Christopher Nolan, Dark Knight, very messy car chase that is breaking the oh, 180 all the time, and I, I think like it's visually a little messy. Here's, can I ask a question real fast that we could cut out if we need yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, sure. When uh, they're doing that car chase and like the the like buddy sidekick car yeah. is in the car, mm -hmm. did that happen just like out of nowhere, or did I like he, he, zone yeah, out for a second? He honks. Okay. He honks. He's like, like, like there's a whole beat. I because I, I I think I zoned out during that part of the movie, she and was I was like, like how, how the fuck did he get in the car? Which his motivation there is very the motivation is confusing. Maybe he's like out for quality. He was like the police guy was mean to me once. He made fun of my bad leg. Yeah. Yeah. So now I quit. I guess I don't know. All that being said, like I, th I feel like he's trying a lot of stuff and it's fun, and like I didn't love everything. Some stuff I really did like, uh, yeah. but yeah, it was visually like very entertaining. Felt, again, felt very real. Felt shot on location. You know, like I loved like the energy in a lot of the sequences. We we talked about this sequence earlier. The the stealing of the wallet and the <laughs> eighty person handoff too much. Yeah, it's just too, too many. Too many hands. much. Exchange too many hands. Too I much. Loved it. I, 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 the the it's sequence too was fun. Much. It was like a little Soderberghy or whatever. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's, I, and I agree, it was fun, but it went through too many it's hands. Tarantino. <laughs> there were too it's many too, hands. It's too silly. But like like that and and the knife with the mouth. Was like the a knife little... with the mouth got oh, such a it. fucking oh, pop so in our movie theater, yeah. I love and that. it was cool. He's monkey but, man, but he uses his mouth. But <laughs> his forehead was right there. His forehead. You can't was right stab there. through yeah, the forehead. So much. Very no, he could have. The knife was here. Oh, you just oh, like, could have had. And I was just like, just go this way. Yeah, you I would like, hit a knife with, with your forehead. The blunt end of a knife. Why not? A monkey would. What if it's in his fucking jugular? No, you're gonna hit. I'm using my forehead, Evan. Evan, tomorrow, get a, we're getting into get the studio. Cantaloupe. We're get streaming a on a fucking Saturday, motherfuckers. Okay? We're going to do Night this fights. for real. Fuck the cantaloupe. Use my neck. The only other thing uh, that they really bothered me, the monkey mask wasn't on for long enough. He should have done... Yeah. I realize he wants, he wants to show <laughs> that... You. He wants to show that it's me, it's Deb, I'm doing the stunts, baby. Yeah, yeah. But, sure like, respect. he should have worn the monkey mask into the first level of yes. that fight and been the beast. Yeah, yeah. Like, That's let the beast out of the cage. I, I, will, also, I will also say... Stop. Let me interrupt you, please. Let stop, me be rude. Let me, let me be rude. For two, no, I'm so okay. sorry. I will also say, dunking the monkey mask in bleach... You would never be able to put that on your face, ever, ever. If it dried out for three years, you could not put that on your face for two seconds. Yep. You would have died immediately. Can someone That's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. I don't get the what fucking bleach. Bobby's bleach. Yeah. I, it, he, he chose put the it name in the Bobby. Cocaine, that's why he chose the name. I thought it was going to be like why his hands were fucked up for a little while. I just thought, like, what was the significance of the bleach? We kept seeing it. But... It just gave him his name, Bobby Bleach. Okay, but. Did... And then he used the bleach on the guy, which I thought was great. Yeah, I thought, I thought yeah, that was great. Yeah, I awesome. Would that kill you? I assume yeah. it would, but it we're them. in an almost superhero world. Yeah. Saturday, um, be here. We're streaming it live. Put your bleach in your cocaine. I'm going to talk about visuals. We're going to do visuals and editing. <laughs> yeah, Combine yeah, yeah, visuals yeah. and editing. Uh, yeah. This was one of the stronger points for me. Yeah. I think it did something that is very hard to do, which is make something that feels like the ambition of a student film in a positive way. Yeah, a lot of times yeah. when you take this many swings, you go, oh, this feels like a thesis film. And that's not right. a compliment. This, I'm saying it as a compliment. It is as ambitious as a guy going like, I've been in school for four years. This is what I have to do to prove myself. But in this case, it's Dev Patel and he's a genius. So yeah. I was really impressed that it does the crazy existential visuals well. The fights, it is so hard to choreograph a fight, much less right. direct a fight, much less be in it <laughs> while you've directed it. I was so impressed at everything working in, in the, the kitchen that didn't feel the same as in the ring, that didn't feel the same as in the final fight. Like it always had a different energy and then the scenes of dialogue weren't boring it's so hard to have a movie that has pacing like that in an edit and slow down to speed up again yeah. so i think one of the strengths of this film is the visuals and the edit so it's a four and a half for me yeah yeah no i 100 percent agree with that i mean like just speaking of that like handoff scene too it's so smooth mm -hmm. and it, it just it works great. so to well to show yeah i mean narratively <laughs> yeah but knock that off the guy the guy at the restaurant Michigan? is gonna take out a couple bucks i mean that's what i'm sure. saying like yeah well he's probably like you know the one you know dollar here dollar there that 80 80 rupees if it's a rupee a person mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, all he wanted That's was a business lot. card it worked out for him. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I said my, my thing in the beginning. I really liked it. Ryan Painter yeah. here asking uh, your favorite kill. I'm not a big, like, kill count kind of guy, but my mm. favorite, like, fight thing in general was obviously... I want you to know that uh, 80 rupees is 96 cents. Ooh. Okay, well, uh, the, $10, thank you. The, the one kick that <laughs> flattens the person in the ring when he's back, yeah. incredible. Yeah. But also, I love that when he's yeah. in the kitchen, instead That's of taking really a cleaver... Good. He's like, let me, let me take a tiny knife. Two idea. tiny knives. With the tiny knife, I don't know, or the, the knife he's knocking in his pants. I thought that was going to come back in the fight with mm. the man at the he very He used end. it in the elevator. He used right? it in the he elevator. Left it in yeah. some guy's leg. Yeah. Oh, you're probably right. Yeah. I, I yeah. lost track of knives yeah, at one for point. Sure. I did like the knife. That was yeah. an intense uh, medley, but I, I can't top the knife bite. Like, that was so cool. Yeah. Monkey the knife. nose. I like the nose bite. Oh, the bite nose bite was, was so intense. I mean, Axe yeah. Kill was pretty good. Axe Kill was the loudest dude was pretty fun. And then I think the moment when, like, you know, uh, his friends from the temple show up. Yeah, like, that's All right, good. Let's yeah. go. Worked. Let's go. Didn't work for me, actually. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, we're running out of time. Great. So, four and a half. Four and a half. <laughs> yeah, four. four and a half. All right, we yeah. got all. We Visual's got all. definitely the strongest point in this movie. As usual, this is the part of the show where uh, we're running long, long on time, and I say the right. line that I say every time we right. do this. Uh, you know, everything that we've been talking about is on surface of you know the directing, right? Mm -hmm. Dev Patel's directorial debut here. I think we've discussed it many times of how impressed we are across the board on like how well this film was done. Um, but anything, anything you guys want to add specifically on the directing? Um, in brief, as a debut, I do want to give credit to him knowing what DP to work with. I feel like it, it doesn't, the, the relationship and the chemistry between a DP, it's funny seeing DPs that work with one director and another and then that how that really affects the directing. So he clearly hired well for what he set out to make. Yeah. And then you also see um, DPs like uh, Greg Frazier or Deacons or those those titans of, of DP work that have such a strong visual flavor that it kind of colors the directing. This was really cool because I can't wait to see what each of them do next. Because there were definitely moments that I was like, oh, Whiplash, but also there was a lot that was specifically Dev Patel. So so I think the chemistry between the DP and the directing was really important, and uh, it's a five for me, the directing. Yeah, because you really got to trust whoever is like behind the camera. The when you're on camera, when especially. When you're on camera, right? Yeah, yeah, and to have it all work so well between the, the edit and like in service of what the story is. And directing the actors and yeah. the action. Fight like scenes. It's yeah. Just impressive paced and everything. Exactly, else. yeah. Sure, yeah. Um, cool. It was really well done. It was really well done. It was well directed. I think that, you know, I didn't realize that this was a $10 million movie. And that says a lot. Yeah. That says a lot. This is like a $75 million movie, right? Um, you know, Koi, what you said just now is something that we were talking about in the office earlier, which is how much credit do you give the director or do you give the credit to the department heads, specifically when you're talking about a first-time director or more even more specifically than that, a first-time director who has been acting in big movies, right? Because mm -hmm. I think about this one, you know, when Bradley Cooper was up for Star is Born, I felt a little bit like, did he really fucking direct this movie? Or was he just sort of like an acting coach and he left the cinematography to his DP mm -hmm. and he left the production design to his production mm -hmm. designer and blah, 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 blah. You have these questions when it's an actor who's stepping in the director chair for the first time. I didn't feel that with this movie. Mm -hmm. I felt personally like, you could feel a consistency across this whole movie that like one person was really focused on achieving, which sometimes you don't feel for a movie. I can't give it a, f a five just because there were all these like sort of nitpicks that we've talked about. Even even though the screenplay is on the screenwriter, it's also on the director to, to make all this stuff work and the editor to make sure that this film you know, puts together perfectly. So I would give it a three and a half or a four. I'll probably lean to a four because I'm, I am excited to see what Deb Patel does next as a director. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I hate to use the word serviceable, but like he did a really serviceable job as a first time director. Yeah. I was impressed by, I agree with the, like, all these points. Yeah. I think, you know, this is a story he obviously brought to the screen so like he has a lot of passion for it yeah, sure. he's in it he's writing he's directing it. i think he did a good job with all of those things it'd be interesting to see what his next project is see him direct something he doesn't write something mm -hmm. he's not in i don't know we'll see sure. but like i think looking at this i was impressed i, I would give him a four certainly like mm -hmm. i think you know whether he you know and we came to this conclusion in the office too right whether or not he's what idea was initially his or mm -hmm. it came from his DP or, or the whomever, right? He's the director. He's making the calls. Yep. And it looks good. I was impressed. Yeah. It could be a little shorter. 
<laughs> really? Yeah. Why, would you, why would you shave though? Out of curiosity. Well, here's my thing. I think you're right that I think there was probably some storyline cut with the woman. Yeah. That uh, I'd rather not Just cut, cut her out. that story. Yeah. If you're cutting that out, I think you cut out all of that. So I we're think, not thinking about it. Yeah. I think her point yeah. is right. Like his compassion leads to him being saved by her. Right. You know. So he's stuck with. Even though she brushes him off, he sticks with like trying to reach out to her, trying to help her, so it helps him in the end. But like, I think you can cut it out. That's not to say that it's a useless story and we should cut it out in general. It's like, just put the whole story, if you're gonna take the time with that, just give me 10 more minutes mm -hmm. and, and fill out that story a little bit more. Five, is it, so, all right, so let's go around the table, do final numbers. I'm going five, I, uh, I have everything I wanted. Yeah, I'm doing, um, you know what, I'll also do five, because I do feel like everything really, it's, you know, that it appeals to me. Maybe it's not all working, but I do think it appeals to me very strongly. Yeah. And right. much like minus one, $10 million. Crazy. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, there's Incredible. also a little flavor for the yeah. directing on a budget. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, four. I'm sticking with a four. I'll give it a four as well. Okay. Yep. All right. And now for the, uh, the final category, Ooh. which we never have enough time for because it's the most important, the sound and score. Okay. Uh, Jed Kersel, the score, he did the score for the Babadook. Uh, listen, I thought the, um, the score and the use of music was done really weird in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> really it was strange. It was really odd. That one uh, fight in, not the last fight, but the second last fight was like kind of quiet drums a little bit. It was a weird... In the main bar. Yeah, there were like, yeah. There was two waves of that fight, and the first one was really subtle. It was very weird. And the weird. second one was like heavy metal guitar. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. loved the new metal, man. A new felt metal, like, weird. like India song was place. awesome. I loved, I loved all the, like, Indian music yeah. that was, like, the rap or, like, the hip-hop that was in it, the weird mixes, the traditional stuff. Loved all that. The Roxanne needle drop. I don't know what you, how do you feel about the Roxanne? I did, so fucking bad. I didn't like it at first. Nose. I was ready. I clocked it and I was like, Ooh, I'm going to have something to say for sound yeah. and score this week because I didn't like it. And then they committed to it for so yeah. long that it won me over. You, it, it won you went, over? It went on for so long. It's a bop. The remix is really good. Yeah, it's, 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 just, like, it's just like, I felt like Dev Patel got out of the fuck it, walked into my movie theater and whacked me in the head. And was like, she awesome. doesn't need to be a prostitute. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I'm here. I'm watching the movie, man. I'm also like, part of me is like, I, I don't know. That's some real bullshit where it's like, you don't know what this lady's been yeah. through, dude. Yeah, like, yeah, you, you don't, don't get to just fucking yeah. swing in. But the whole movie's about turning on a red shit. light. Look like, at the marketing. True. Yeah, yeah. Like, you ran through a house where, like, the lady. You Roxanne. Know, it, yeah. <laughs> the red light. The red light. I thought it was funny. <laughs> but that's not what you want in that no. moment. Yeah. You don't want to You're like cheeky. There was great music cues, and there was very weird music cues. I, I agree, Evan. <laughs> like, I don't know. It was, it was a lot. It was yeah. There was some interesting stuff, too, because I felt like they were inspired by the Rocky soundtrack at times because mm. they were doing a heavy, like, bell yeah. that mm. they would do. They would do this, like, bell noise that I was like, I'm sure that's sampled from something I've heard yeah. before. Oh, yeah. Sounded really familiar so like i love so the I drums did just think that the score was like doing a lot of different like kind of yeah. tropey things and never really found like its own voice yeah i wanted like a like you know when the credits rolled like the monkey man rap right? i mean obviously <laughs> dev patel doing it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know uh i'm gonna say for me i can't tell between three and a half or four because it wasn't bad or distracting it just wasn't right i'm gonna i think i'm gonna go a little lower and go three and a half because i did really like the sound design the punches landing like all of the yeah. the that work was and great they came yeah, into the sound, was very yeah, the sound design was great yeah but some of the music yeah. was a little distracting yeah but the sound design was I, i'm gonna change it to a four i'm gonna go four because the sound design and a lot yeah. of the songs were good and introduced me to some stuff cool yeah uh, I'm gonna go uh, for a three because, like, I really thought the use of like the way they use the needle drops was like, not great, and the score for me was not as memorable. I think, but the sound design, like, for a movie like this, you need that mix, and you need that design to be very, right. very good, and that's why you watch this movie in theaters, and that's why you or you invest tens of thousands of dollars into the best home audio setup you've ever invested, <laughs> yeah. you know. But it's it sounds great, and sounds and good. it makes those fight scenes way more impactful when you can hear all of the like thuds and the knife stabs and and the like, nose the bites nose yeah. bites yeah i feel like he needed a theme right you need you wanted like, like a monkey man theme, 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 theme that you were like kind of humming on the yeah. way out you know what i mean 
Yeah. That's what I was missing. But I agree. And, and I, we have this great training montage where they're playing the yeah. drums. It's fucking sick. I love like, that just sequence. bring that. Uh, just bring I would that love if the, the light and dark. Would I did feel like one of the fights towards the end had like that drum. But I would have loved going. that as a theme. Right. I yes. think it would have been really cool if it was like a signature. Yeah. Like he's yeah. slowly building to it. Yeah. Movie, and by the end, he's exactly. got it. That and way. his left and right yeah. kind of yes. have a, a, a you know a pace. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. then it ties into why that baby drive unlock something. Yeah. And that oh that was the thing I was gonna say. I love Edgar Wright a lot. I like. I think he's like a very strong director. But I never think he always like. Oh, I have, I have this great idea for a set piece, right. and then it never comes back throughout yeah, the movie. Yeah. Like Baby Driver has a great sequence where you know the main character is walking along. You see the lyrics on the wall. Mm. That never comes back. Yeah. That should have been throughout the whole movie. Mm -hmm. Sorry, weird, weird tangent. But yeah, this yeah, has yeah. been Baby Driver. This is yeah. Baby. This is my review. Baby <laughs> a few of Monkey Man. Yeah, sixty uh, for yeah. Baby Driver. Sorry, moving on. <laughs> I think I, yeah. For me the. Man, the sound and score. Because I did like a lot of it, but yeah, yeah, some things did take me out. I hate three and a half. Yeah. yeah. I think if they had, and again, if you had a rap during the credits. I put on the movie soundtrack a rap the way, during the credits. I played the soundtrack on the way here. You that's know. why I decided on the four over three. Oh, okay. Because it made me inspired enough to go to the Spotify. Yeah, so I'm yeah, going to go four. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's actually a very interesting um, gauge because there's so often where I'm in the AMC 16 in Manitoba parking structure and I'm driving out and I want to put the score on, but we're in an underground and I can't load it on my Spotify and it pisses me off. This was not one of those movies. It's a two for the score Whoa. because the sound uh, design and the sound editing is so good. It's a three for this oh, category. Okay. But the oh, score, wow. I genuinely think it's Woo. like, well, it's, it's, that was it's, love. That was love. it's worse yeah. than the screenplay, but less impactful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the soundtrack reminds me a lot of like Shang Chi, which had like yeah. a lot of great a new music of a and lot a great album. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great accompaniment to the movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Shang Chi shout out Idiot Rising Man. Yeah, Idiot do. Rising, good stuff. Come on, the great. Show. My buddy has a uh, song on that. Uh, uh, it's not awesome. awesome. Yeah. Wait. You know what Shang Chi didn't have though was like a rap during the credits, like explaining who Shang Chi was, like the history of Shang Chi. Mm -hmm. Could you? <laughs> what his next adventure is gonna be? <laughs> All right. You I know almost, John. I almost just tried to road launch into a freestyle rap for Shang Chi. I so could have not. <laughs> Ooh, interesting, uh -oh. interesting. So before this, we started, update. I was asking, I was telling Dashiell, I was like, you know what, Dashiell, I think if I were to guess before anybody said anything, we'd come out at a 75. Mm. Whoa, we that's really low. Well, no. Godzilla minus, Godzilla, not minus one, Godzilla Kong, we ended up rating pretty low. In the 60s, right? Yeah, in the 60s. No. So that's fair. our final number for this one is a 78.5. Wow. wow. I think that is I think that is right on the money. I do think that's right on the money. I think I, that's low. I, thought, low. I think it's a little low. I think maybe I think the movie overall could be here. I think maybe as a movie B minus B. Yeah, I was going to 82 83 is where I'd put it, which yeah. isn't that far from yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I cuz genuinely I was like should I just stick with a 2 for the score cuz I think we're going to be in the high 80s dropping. and I think we should be a little bit lower than that. <laughs> I think that's right, man. Well, we did it. Sometimes the scores have a way of surprising you. Oh. Which camera to look at? Um, hey, that's it for us today. Uh, Koi, where can the people find you? Uh, I've been making my own YouTube page a little spicier. I'm doing a weekly show Spicy. every single week. I'm gonna give you all of the comics I read the week before, my top nine Whoa. fully reviewed. So I read about 50 to 70 books a week. So if you wanna not read 50 to 70, you can watch my top nine. Maybe that. a comic is for you amongst that. I also preview every book coming out on Wednesday and give you the comic book news. And that's what I'm doing for now. I'm gonna up that to movies as well once I get the hang of editing. But every week on my YouTube comic stuff, soon to be movie stuff as well. It's at Quajandro there and on TikTok, Twitter, everywhere you find me. Just type my name into Google and in a lot of places, but YouTube is what I'm trying to build up now. Thank you. Oh. 50 to 70. Imagine I'm reading. reading. And you, I, you also go to the gym. I go to the gym and I watch five movies a week and I try to watch a show a month. What the fuck wow. is going on? I don't That's commitment. rest, but I do consume. <laughs> I'm s I have 200 grams of protein a day. I was telling them I'm reading like The Last Ronin right now, that Ninja yeah. Turtles comic book. I'll read, I have the trade, right, that I got from the library. I'll read one comic and I'm like, Nothing Read a here. comic. Hmm, time to go to bed. I had like, uh, 50 to 70 a week. Yeah, I mean, I read seven today so far. I got another three wow. to finish up this week. Damn. It's incredible. Damn. I wish I was still read But that way people yeah. don't, like, I, I think it's intimidating to start comics. So I want to give is. my top nine so people know, like, oh, I like that character, which one? Or, like, yeah. oh, that sounds interesting enough. And I just want it to be more approachable because I think comics are... Got anything are... Uh, for Wolf's Bane lately? You know, Wolf's Bane's been tucked away, but the new <laughs> New Mutants run's pretty solid and Wolf's okay. Bane might come back. So, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Are you excited right. for the new for, uh, the, the post new story? Era? Yeah. yeah. I think it's the first relaunch since the 90s that's going to bring that the new fans in. Yeah. I'm trying to finish right. the Krakoa the... stuff. It's ending right I'm now. Still, I'm still in Dawn of X right now. Oh, you got some time. I got, but I got a way to go. Especially one issue a day.
but it's fun. Well, I read a, sometimes two if I'm a good boy. <laughs> well, the problem is the library doesn't have volume eight, and I'm I'm at a crossroads right now. All right, all right. They're mid, they've got all of them, but not volume eight, and I. I think I, House of Secrets I asked, and Manitoba. I asked the librarian. Like I was like, if I buy this trade paperback, just so I can read it, can I just give it to you guys so that the next poor soul at the library can finish? I think they do that. You can donate to a library. Well, no, they don't. The, mm, the right, Manitoba, Manitoba Library. <laughs> they don't love it because they don't know what you fucking did to the book. Oh, my God. Uh, so they they get some real perverts. Yeah, they're like the biggest library you know, in they, Manitoba. They, they're like, we're getting books. We're not, yeah, we don't, we need we don't care about this. Um. Wow, that has been the comic talk on the break room. Oh, I, guess. I loved it. Uh, make hey, sure hey, hey Carlo, uh, cut this all out. Yeah, cut okay. that out. Uh, no, 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 you want to keep the plug. Keep the plug. Keep the plug. Keep the plug for your local library. They also have an online comics reading service. Which is fantastic. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Cosmixology. Make sure this Amazon is has a comic service. <laughs> Um, Make sure to subscribe to the Break Room channel on YouTube and give us a follow on Twitch where we do videos like these live. Uh, follow Break Room NR on social media and we'll catch you later all. Later, skaters. Bye. Gone, man, man everyone's taking all of my stuff today. <laughs>